Well, that was a simply marvellous lunch. Took an hour to get through it all. And um, <clears throat> I had a glass of white wine. I, I, I wasn't really keen on the wine, to be honest. It was, but, uh, well, it wasn't the same class as the, uh, the wines in Italy or France, I'm afraid. <clears throat> That's just the, probably because it's free. But it's certainly a very, very nice line. I'm not going to go through all the stuff that was on, on offer because that's not fair. But uh, I could tell you that one lunch was probably more than I can eat in a week at home. Um, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, but it's all, all included, so I may as well tuck in, as I say. And of course, uh, nothing's changed. There's, um, there's different artists but they still have that serenade piano on a Sunday lunchtime playing away in the background, you know, the, the grand black piano with the very shiny um, keys and uh, I don't know what make it is, but uh, the pianist was very good and so was the, the female singer. Unfortunately, it was that sort of serenade music and uh, it sometimes gets a bit sad and that's one of the reasons I kind of departed from the table because I just thought this is uh, killing me. This this music is it's making me think of up and down. But she did um, she sang Happy Birthday. And it kind of made me think about the you know I've up and down said to me I'll give you your due. You've never forgotten my birthday. I mean, I'm not saying that every year I've given her presents or cards because half the time I don't know where she's been or where she lived. But uh, I certainly never forgot her, got, forgot her birthday date in all the years. And um, But she did say to me, you know, you've never, ever sung happy birthday to me. I said, because I've never in your company on your birthday for one reason or another. And anyway, I don't know the words to happy birthday. And uh, she just looked at me with that kind of off blank kind of stare. But I was reminded there, I was thinking about the time we were in. Oh, it was kind of a bit bizarre actually because um, I had uh, some business in Vienna. And of course, up and down was a uh, resident in Bratislava at the time, and we had some contact, and um, I said, well, I'll be there for probably a couple of weeks. She said, I can't take two weeks to see you. I said, no, 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 we'll work something out. And I said, look, I've got a fabulous idea. Um, the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, a bit of an irony, actually, but they were actually playing in Budapest. I said, why don't I get the train from Vienna I can pick you up at Bratislava and we can head on to Budapest and I'll get the tickets for the, uh, the Vienna Philharmonic. I think they're doing a Tchaikovsky evening or something. And she said, that's a marvellous idea. I can't wait. Oh, please do come. And I said, yeah, that's sorted. We'll do that. And I remember, oh, it's a wonderful train journey um, from Austria to Hungary. But... Um, I did say to her, I says, um, are you um, adequately dressed for the evening? Because, um, I mean, she had a smashing evening dress on, but I said, really, uh, you've only got a light cardigan and there's, uh, it's very wintry in Hungary at the moment. And she said, uh, oh, shut up. And I said, well, let it be on your own shoulders. No pun intended, but it was very cold and very snowy. Anyway, we um, encountered a, a huge snowstorm uh, near the Hungarian border and um, the train managed to pull through okay, but um, when we got to uh, Budapest, I said, uh, look up and down, I said, I'm concerned that you're going to get chilled. Uh, let's pop into some boutique and get you sorted out with something. And she, she then agreed because she, she does listen to my advice. Sometimes she... she um, kids on that she uh, ignores my advice but she normally takes on board what I'm trying to say and and in her own way she uh, she accommodates my advice at a later date I, I, I do get that 
But on this occasion, she was um, adamant that um, she was not going to uh, opt for the uh, 70, well, the equivalent of 75 pound jacket that I had in mind because she spotted, um, it, well, we're going back to the time when um, fur jackets and furs were not frowned upon by society. Um, in fact, it was, uh, if you wore a fur jacket, you were, you were a celebrity, you were a hero in society. And of course, up and down then spotted this um, mink coat. Well, it was mink and fox fur, actually. And I says, no, up and down, I'm not buying you this. It's, you know, she said, please let me try it on at least. And I said, well, go on. And I must say, she looked absolutely adorable. She really was. As she, I thought to myself, she looks absolutely beautiful. Um, particularly with this coat on. I says, um, no, no, up and down. I've made a decision. We can't, I can't afford to, to buy this. Let me look. Oh, no. When I looked at the price tag, I says, no. And she said to me, I thought you loved me. I says, well, I do, but not for that much money. Well, you don't love me then. I says, oh, come on up and down. That sounds like blackmail. And she said, well, you don't love me. I'm not going to watch your, um, or listen to Vienna Philharmonic. Is, is that understood? I says, oh, come on up and down. Don't be so childish. But she said, stamped her feet and said, no, no. I want this coat. It was a beautiful ankle length um, fox fur with a mink collar and cuffs. And um, I must say, she looked absolutely fabulous in it. Uh, 18,000 pounds later, um, oh, it really was a, a big dent in the. Uh, my finances, but I said, okay, we'll do that. And um, I said to her a, a few years uh, ago, I says, do you remember that time we were heading to Budapest in the storm, the snowstorm? And she goes, oh, yes. I says, whatever happened to the, uh, the fur jacket that I bought for 18,000 pounds? And she said that she put it in the recycle bin. I said, you did what? And she said, well, it was the time I'd fallen foul of your face. And so therefore I put it in the recycle bin. And I said, oh, goodness me, up and down. Every single thing I've given you has gone to the bin, hasn't it? And she said, yes. It's very sad. It's very sad indeed. Up and down's bin. Oh. I also remember a time uh, myself and up and down went to Bulgaria. Oh, this is a long time ago, many years ago, and um, it was to see her mother um, perform uh, due to due to public demand, basically uh, in her home country. Uh, the fan base had been asking her to come back and do one final gig or dance routine and uh, anyway me and up and down decided we would go over and support our mother and uh, <clears throat> I bought her a, I bought her mother a lovely bunch of flowers and um, uh, a very nice painting and um, before she even got on stage she'd given them away to somebody uh, so she never even looked at them um, she just handed them away to the nearest person. It's kind of in their nature to do that with gifts, just take them and give them away to strangers. But um, <clears throat> she, um, it was a terrible thing, it really was. I, I have to say, in, in all my life, I've never seen such a dreadful performance. It was like, uh, well, it was like a, 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 a drunken ballerina who had failed to do any warming up and she was just crashing and thrashing across the stage and her heavy limbs were trying to raise them and uh, I heard some of the audience booing and 
up and down, lowered her head in shame, and uh, she was thoroughly embarrassed. And I can understand why her, her mother had, should have hung up the uh, the dance shoes many, many decades before that performance. I can assure you, it was dreadful. And um, the newspapers were at a field day, laughing stuff of Bulgaria. And uh, I think it was such a performance that uh, Up and Down's mother no longer displayed any of her trophies and medals and uh, pictures of anything to do with her dancing days. And uh, a bit like Up and Down, she uh, tossed most things into the recycle bin, including her picture on the front of Forbes magazine from 1974. But uh, it truly was one of the worst performances I've seen by any solo dancer. Even the uh, orchestra started to go out of tune. It was just terrible. It really was awful, and the lighting didn't fit the fit the uh, the dance routine at all. It was just abysmal. It truly was. It's a a subject that's never brought up uh, in the conversations with up and down or or in her family home any longer. It was just a, it was one of these um, particular dance routines that's uh, best forgotten. And uh, I think her mother fell down four times when she was trying to do the, the can-can. Um, she could hardly lift her legs above her knees, so it was uh, truly, truly awful.